Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that you love us so much. And thank you, Lord, for calling us. Thank you, Lord, for appointing us for ministries. And Lord, that we can be a part of your kingdom. And Lord, that in this present time in history, Lord, you have placed us here in this location for us, Lord, to excel in your name and to be able to be your hands extended and to touch people for Christ. So we thank you. Bless all of us here this evening, Lord, as we once again catch that vision and that cause that is greater than us. Help us, Lord, to move with one heartbeat and to be as uh, united as you want us to be, to be of one heart, one mind, one spirit, so that we can do your work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take away all obstacles. Take away, Lord, all frustrations. And help us, Lord, to focus upon you and you alone. In your name, Lord Jesus, we all pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for coming in to First Cell. And uh, like I have said earlier on, in First Cell, we are killing a couple of birds with one stone is that uh, we not only come together for fellowship, to worship and among the leaders of the church, but that we come here also to find time to plan. And because our church is still a small entity, uh, we don't need this uh, a lot of red tape. So what we want to do is that whatever planning that we can set here, we want to set it in motion. Uh, I have heard from uh, people uh, who are, may not be close to the leadership, uh, that you know they still do not know the direction of the church and what the church wants to do and all that. And that is not uh, true because I think I've shared with all of you the vision of the church and how the church would move on and also the system in which the church would function. And therefore, I like to go through this once more with you, but this time with a uh, firmer structure. And I'm going to... Uh, encourage you to share this with everybody that you know in Faithline. Once again, all right, we're going to run through this again with you. So nobody is going to say, we don't know where we are going, all right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to go very, very quickly here. Uh, we are going to talk about the discipleship uh, journey that we want everybody in our church to go through, right? So, so this, these are the four things that we have always been doing, but now we just put it in another form, okay? So connect. Connect is a hand to hold. Equip is a pathway to growth. Mentor is a life to invest. Release is a world to change, okay? So just remember these four. And this is not, uh, these designs are not from us, okay? This is from Pastor Benny Ho of, uh, you know, one of my old friends back there. But he has taken what we have done also, and then he put into all this. And so instead of reinventing the wheel, I kind of uh, uh, took from him. But he is freely sharing with everyone uh, in every church. Yeah. And so this is the discipleship journey that anyone who come in our church, they need to connect and we need to equip them. We need to mentor them and we need to release them. And this is... Uh, the first thing is connect, is a hand to hold. What we are trying to say is first, the person when it comes to our church, we must connect the person to Christ that the person will have an abiding relationship with Christ. And so Christ must be put first. It's not the church, but it's the Christ. I mean, it's the Lord himself. So that they come to a personal relationship, an abiding relationship with Christ. So that is top priority. Without Christ, we are nothing. It will be only a social program, a club, an activity, nothing, okay? And then we want to connect to the church because you must connect the person to the local body of Christ. There's no such thing as you connect to Christ and not connected to the body of Christ. You can't be connected to the head without being connected also to the body. And so for us, that we are a cell church and therefore, everybody got to be in a delta cell. And then later on, you find that 
people who are in the daughter cell, when you become a leader, then you can form your own cell. Yours become a daughter cell, but you continue to come back to your mother cell. Okay, so that one we have explained before. Then you find that a new person must be connected to the cause, connected to the vision of the house, which means that what the Lord has given to faith line and what the Lord has given to the kingdom of God that is translated tangibly to a local body of Christ called faith line. So if God has called you to faith line, stay here and grow here and internalize this cause and take this cause to become your own. Until you personalize this cause to become your own, you find that you will never be a part of that vision of God in this local body of Christ. So you can go from church to church, you can go from place to place, you will find that the vision of the kingdom is not tangible to you. Therefore, uh, people will come, maybe they get they connected to Christ, they will come, they connected to the church, but when they are connected to the cause, they will stay faithful, they will remain faithful. Because sometimes you can be disappointed with the church, with the people in the church, all right? But the cause of the kingdom, I have been faithful to the cause of the kingdom. Now, all these years, no matter where I had been, whether you know I had been in Cambodia or in Philippines or at, anywhere or lived in the United States, the cause of the kingdom is the top priority. Okay, so we when people come into our church, that is the first thing, uh, right? Well, of course, the first thing is Christ, yeah? but the, that that the connect is important, Christ, church, and cause. And then, so the cause of God is far bigger than us. The cause of God for his kingdom is far bigger than all of us can even imagine. So it's not about a local entity only, but that this vision that God gave to us and what we plan to do and how we are connected so that we can fulfill the commission of the Lord. It's no longer about us. It's about him and him alone and what he has asked us uh, to do. So when we connect to Christ, then we listen to his voice and we are clear about his cause and we are clear about the cause of the house because God gave to everybody a house. Everybody has a home. So if this is your home church, make sure that it is really your home church. This is your family. And then the next thing is equip. Equip is a pathway to growth. So how do we equip the people? Equip in the heart so that the people have they have passion and zeal. That they have this zeal for Christ. You know, the passion, the great love for Jesus. When all else fails, that love for Jesus remains. Okay? Then they should have the knowledge and the wisdom that's equipped in the head. The knowledge and the wisdom so that there is a renewing of the mind, there's a transformation in the thinking pattern, and then there is that dying to self, and then there's carrying of the cross daily, and so that they know the word of God, and the word of God is addressing them. And then there's, there must be the equipping in the hand, the skills and proficiency. Those of you who have been called to teach, be the very best teacher that you can be. Those have been called to preach, be the very best preacher that you can be. That is, you can be. Not asking you to go and compete with everybody. The, your, the first person that you have to challenge will be yourself. Means that when you maximize yourself, the Lord got nothing but say to you, good and faithful servant, because he wants you to maximize yourself. So it's, it's like this. I always say that if you are a student and you get, you are, you, you, you can get A, then you get the very best A that you can be, that you can get. But if you are a B student, then get the very best B. If you are a C student, then get the very best C. Because not all of us are going to be that of a A, a student in everything. But what, we, what the Lord wants to see will be you maximizing everything that you have. And then which means that your proficiency, your skill level, for example, for example, if the Lord asks you to do simple office work, 
and that while you are doing this office work, you are either thinking you are, you are working for the boss or you are working for the Lord or you are working for yourself. Now, if you think that you are working for the boss, maybe you will work hard. If you think that you are going to work for yourself, maybe you will work hard. But let's say if you are thinking of working for the Lord. You now, some people say, oh, I work for the Lord so I can be, you know, casual. I can, be, I can do anything I want. And that is a wrong attitude here. For example, when you photocopy, right? When you photocopy, the first copy that goes in, you must check, right? If let's say the photocopy is slanting, and you just don't care because this is for the Lord, you know, it's some musical score and some uh, song, you know, for the church. And so it's slanting. And you, and you don't care, you just, and just photocopy. Now, can you care? Yes. So what would be the proficiencies? It would be to check, double check, and triple check, right? But because you are too lazy to check or you can't be bothered, therefore, 500 copies all slanted. Now, why I'm saying this, because this actually happened in my former church in Singapore. One of the staff actually behaved this way. We asked him to, actually we asked her to uh, photocopy a, a document. 500 copies. It came out all slanted. Why? Because she couldn't care to check the first copy. So we had to re-photocopy and use the 500 as waste uh, paper, you know, to do our little sketching during meeting. But you see, these are the kind of things that you have to be, that, that must be a standard, all right? So when we equip you so that you can grow spiritually, but in your being, you also can grow in your doing. Yes, you... You may do without becoming, but in becoming, you have to do. And when you do, you've got to do your very best. And I believe that the kingdom of God deserves our very best. And then here we have to equip the people into the two-hand punch. All right? Which means that people have to learn how to share the gospel, how to witness. Everybody coming must go through the four kingdom books. And then, you know, they must go to courses and they must attend cell. And in the cell, they must be taught how to share the gospel. So the two-hand punch that is said, you know, by uh, Christ when he told the apostles, you know, you preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast out evil spirit. Teaching the people how to share the gospel, how to be a witness. Some people say, oh, pastor, you know, I'm not called by God to be a preacher. But everybody is to be a witness. And then in our church, we, we, we teach you how to uh, heal the sick by command, how to cast out evil spirit. And there are causes. All right. There, there are causes that, that we give to you. And it's not that we have no experience in this and that we are just talking about it. We have done it. Those of you who have gone with us for, on a mission trip, you have seen how we have done it. All right. So this is what happened here, is that, that if, let's say, nobody has seen us doing it, then you say, oh, it's only theory. But for the last 16 years, we have been doing this. But why are you not picking it up? Is it because you are too proud to pick it up or because you know too much to, to pick it up? But that, this is not about us. This is about the kingdom. This is in the Bible. Every disciple knows how to preach, the, how to witness, and how to uh, heal the sick and cast out evil spirit. That is that uh, kingdom. I mean, that is the power evangelism here that we are that we talk about. And then we come to mentor. Mentorship it means a life to invest. Mentoring is a connection and a continuity of the cause of the kingdom of God. When people come to the church, they don't know. But later on, they start to see our life and they want to follow. So from the older servants to the younger servants, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we must impart our life. We must invest our life in another life or in many other lives. And then 
this is a passing on of the kingdom values, the kingdom belief, the kingdom encouragement and wisdom. And I thank God that many of you are already doing this. Praise God. You see, mentorship is not that, uh, you know, you assign, you know, okay, this person be your mentor. And you know, no, 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 no. Mentorship is more or less like an invitation. Whether people want to be mentored by you, it's up to them. Like I have mentor, Pastor William Lau is my mentor. Right? But I have other peer mentors. Peer mentors means people who are your peers. Like Pastor Sam Hari is my peer mentor. We talk about spiritual things here. Okay? And some of you are my peer mentor. So, so mentorship is not like somebody over you. No. But somebody willing to be a giver. Giving a part of his life to you, giving a part of his time to you, you know. And then that's where I learned. Pastor George Rutron is one of my peer mentors too. He is willing to share his life with me and to, because he has been a pastor for many years, there's a lot of experiences that he has that I can tap from. But it takes humility, you understand? You know, I can be very pompous and say, you know, I've been a pastor for a long time. So what? But new season, this uncommon time need uncommon approaches. I have to humble and say, help me. Help me. I, I need some advice here. How do we go through this COVID-19 stuff? You know, we ha I have never gone through this like this be before. How do we carry faith line, you know, to this hybrid service when, you know, we are doing Zoom and doing on-site and online ministry? So mentorship is very important. Unless you, uh, you know everything, then you don't need a mentor. But I don't. And I pray that you recognize that you don't. The linking of generations together in positive relationship within the kingdom of God. And that is where... When, when Brother Allen approached us and said that, you know, he wants to work among these young uh, people, you know, this teen, and then how the transition between faith kids to faith teen and to faith youth and all that. That's what happened, the linking of generations. I so appreciate him, you know, I was saying, wow, this is great. I love it. And we need somebody who dare to come and say that, Pastor, I want to take a lead in this. You know, being a leader is not that you want to be proud. No, no. Being a leader is to be a servant. You know how much? Now, he got work to do and he got family to take care of. And why should he spend time to do all this? Because of the kingdom of God, because of Christ. That's why he wants to link the generations together. Different groups come together. And so now they had the first program. And I think, uh, you know, Sister Shavi, Sister Mi Ping, and uh, who else? You know, all of you, you, you know who you are. Praise be to God. These young people now, they have a means to come to know Christ and then you are impacting their life with your life. You see? So that's mentorship. And so four fundamental qualities of a mentor or a tutor is a fusion of mind, body, uh, soul, and spirit at work, right? So you have to have a loving heart, you have to have a willing mind, you have to have a serving spirit and a helping hands. And when I see this in you and that you're willing, God is willing to do great things. Once you say, I'm available, right? There is hope. And what we will do here in this church, sometimes I ask God, you know, I say, in fact, the other day, not the other day, yesterday when I prayed. And I was a little bit discouraged yeah, because of some people leaving and some people talking and all that negative stuff. And I was like, oh God. I said, Lord, I'm so discouraged. But I'm not as discouraged as Moses. Like, you know, but I said, I was discouraged. You know, I said, Lord, I'm old already. Have you found that verse in the Bible? And I said, I'm very old. <laughs> 
He said, God told Joshua, you are very old. <laughs> yeah. But God, you know, the Lord is so loving. He didn't scold me. He didn't say stupid man, you know. Why you talk like that? Very lovingly, and he told me, remember Albert, it's my church. I will take care. You just do what I ask you to do. And just like that, just like that, suddenly my whole spirit just flipped. And I felt the joy. I felt the peace. I felt that, ah, that's hope. As long as Christ is in the picture, I don't care what you say. That's hope. You, you see the point here. I don't care what anybody say. As long as my Jesus is in the picture, this church will go on. You know, if everybody were to leave, but if the Lord said, I am here, and you have to do this work. And I will be that one guy who stand alone at the lentil field and I will fight. I will do it. That's the resolve that I have. Nothing. No matter who live, who talk ne negative things, as long as there is a call. But if there is no more call, you find I will fade away. I will fade away. I don't have to do this. But because, because there is a call, loving heart, willing mind, serving spirit, helping hands, God help me. We will do it. I will do it. So mentor is a life to invest, means intentionally seek to invest your life into other lives. Yes, this year I'm, I will be 67. I'm still 66, but I'll be 67. Yes. But it's still a life. I'm still alive. I'm going to invest my life in other lives. So there will be this apprenticeship that I pray that you would invest your life in other life in terms of teaching others to become servants of God. Internship, teaching them to become servant leaders. And then through your role model, you give advice, which is words, and through your action, right? Teachable moments. You create teachable moments for people. All right, the last one is called release, a world to change. To glorify God by nurturing Christ-like disciple makers. Just now, Pastor Abraham Pan talked about it. Discipler. That's disciple makers to touch people for Christ in PJ and beyond. PJ is the location of Wisma TA. But already now, we are touching people beyond because of this online services right let's do it let's continue to do it don't wallow in this little small circle you know get out of there look beyond yourself and look you know across the bridge of your nose and start to see the things beyond god has greater things far ahead of you far ahead of me far ahead of faith line one day faith line will fade away but the kingdom of God will continue to march on to the end of the age. It's not about the franchise. It's not about the name, faith line. But for right now, this is the local body that God gave us. And this is the body who create platform for people to do ministry. And I am confident that many who come sincerely to want to express the ministry that God gave to them we will help them to maximize so that they will become the people that God wants them to be. Just like Barnabas bringing Paul to see Peter and to see the apostle and go to the Jerusalem church. Barnabas opened a way for Paul so that Paul could maximize his life to become the person that God wanted him to be. There are many Pauls here and some churches are closing their doors to these people. You know why? Because they are a this guy is a better preacher than I am. So he's a better preacher, therefore I don't get him in. You know, because what happened if he would, uh, you know, take the limelight? You take the limelight. So I don't want to get him in. How many churches are with this kind of selfish motivation, selfish reason? Forget about it. In our church, is that we continue to provide platforms for people who want to serve. Okay? 
because other people also provided platform for us. Isn't that true? If God has allowed other brothers and other sisters to provide platform for us to minister, why can't we provide platform for others? That's why you will find that uh, we have affiliate pastors. Who are these affiliate pastors? They are not under us, but they are ministering outside, you know, outside of faith line. But they are known as affiliate minister or affiliate pastors because they have a ministry of their own, but they need a covering. And so these are people that we know personally and we have observed their life and we have seen that godliness in their life and we have seen the sacrifices that they give. And so these people, we make them into affiliate pastors so that we can vow for them and that when they minister elsewhere, then people write to me and say, uh, do you know this pastor? Yes, 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 this is our affiliate pastor. Until such time that they can be on their own, then we release them. They don't have to come under our umbrella because our umbrella is only for the purpose of function. We said, if, if we serve a function, we will, we will do it. Nothing to be pompous about or proud about that you have many affiliate pastors. No. Grow, grow, grow beyond that. Grow beyond that. If you think about that, you are too small. Grow beyond that. See the kingdom of God. What you are planning to do here is that faith line is being established so that you know we can be the catalyst for those young people who want to go into ministry. You know what is going to happen? Some young people are going to come and we are going to send them to full-time Bible school and we are going to sponsor them. Now, if the church doesn't have money, we are going to raise money from all over. We are going to go to the rich people and we'll ask them, look, we need some funds for these kids to go to Bible school, for these young men to go to Bible school, these young ladies to go to Bible school. Yes, we want to do that. Let me see. But we must be of one heart and one mind. Today, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel in my heart here. Now, whatever people tell you about me, if you listen to them, then it's your choice. But now you are listening to me. I'm telling you exactly what is going through in, in my spirit, in my soul here. I want to see all of you equipped and that you are being mentored and you are being released and that you can do great things. You know, I just received two reports from Pastor Carlson. Look, when we release him, he, in that little small place, he has baptized a couple of people, I think. He got a couple of people saved. Now he's into the feeding program and he's reaching out to the poor and, he's, and, and he sent me uh, photos, you know, whereby, you know, he's healing the sick and, and miracles happen. So everything that he learned here, he's applying there. Guess what? There's joy in my spirit. That's what we want. Do we need him to be known as Faith Line 2 or Faith Line 3? No need. Forget about this franchise stuff. I'll grow that. And focus on the kingdom of God. His church is doing good work. Now, if we, if we have not released him, now, while here on, in, in, in Faith Line, he didn't do that, right? He didn't go and feed the poor. He, he didn't reach out to the people in that area. No. But now you find that the Lord has given him his ministry. And now you see. And they actually even have an on-site service. And I saw people there. And it's wonderful. As a spiritual father, you know what? It's joy. How many of you, how many of you, you have children who succeed? Are you going to be very frustrated because your children are doing better than you? <laughs> if you are like that, then you are a very stupid father or a very stupid mother. Right? I want my children to be doing much better than I am. That's it. Same. Spiritual children are the same. But Pastor Carlson is not the only spiritual uh, child that I have. I have other spiritual children 
Now, some of them, they have grown up and they don't want to be my spiritual children, which is fine. As long as they are children of the Most High God, who cares whether they acknowledge me as their spiritual father or mentor or what? You don't need that. Like I say, you outgrow that. See the point here. So, Taling Jaya and Dion. Some of you have seen this map before. Okay? So, we have all this area. We can we have Shalam, we have Kajang, Ampang. All this area, we can plant a church there. Every small town, every place, we can plant a church. And when the church is ready to be independent, we release them. But when we plant them there, then what happens here is that there will be, either we take these people from the small town and they come to our church and be trained, all right? Or they'd be trained on Zoom. And then we support them until they are able to be on their own. Okay? Then there will be lighthouses everywhere. Like this is what we want to do. And some of you, maybe you come to a time that you want to give up your uh, full-time job and be a full-time pastor. We will send you to the small town you, and you have learned everything here and you can go there and do. All right? So release is a world to change. So we release the people to ministry. For those who want to go into ministry, we release you. Those who want to release to marketplace, we release you like Pastor Charlie said, you want to be released to the marketplace. He is not uh, to be you know, a pastor in the church, but to be a leader, a spiritual leader in the marketplace. And then you can be released to mission. Some of you, uh, God has called you to be missionary to China, missionary to India, missionary to other places or missionary to other states, or missionary to Saba, or missionary to Sarawak. Yeah, talk to us. Talk to us. We'll put you through a quick training program. You learn the two-hand punch. You know the word of God. You know exegesis. You know uh, hermeneutics. You know how to get into the word. You go. All right? And the church will raise funds for you. Yes, the church will raise. So you don't worry about money. You don't go there and then you grow hungry and you die there. No. But that you will be able to do the work of, of, of the Lord. Okay. So this is the four, four things that we talk about, right? To connect, to equip, to mentor, to release. All right. The Delta cell system. Now you have gone through this before. I'm going to go through with you. What to expect? Those of you who are heading up Delta Cell, remember the five W's here that we have is worship, word of God, warfare. We have healing. All right. If when there come a time that there's on-site Delta Cell, we will have healing, and there will be food, and there will be warm fellowship. Okay. Those of you in your own cells are being opened on-site. These are the things that can happen. Now online, of course, we don't have food. But online, all this can still happen. The, the, the four things can happen except for food. Now, what do you do in the Delta Cell? To discuss one of the Bible lessons that have been posted on YouTube, which means that one of the sermons or one of the teachings, right? And all cell leaders are to take note while watching the video. That we want you to be able to share what is have been, what are the principles being spoken during the sermon. For example, if let's say there's a sermon that I give, and then there are pointers that you have to take down by yourself. But we will also give you notes so that you can discuss. Or there might be a sermon by Pastor Ashok or Pastor Dian or whichever pastor, right? You as cell leaders got to take note and then we will also give you notes so that you can have a comparison. Because what is going to happen is that in a cell, we don't have teachers. In a cell, we have facilitators. All right? Therefore, all the teaching come through the video and then you only facilitate. And so that this can be repeated. Now, if you are a teacher, Right, you have the gift of teaching. Come and see me personally, and we can work out some Bible study courses that you can teach. But you must be competent enough to teach. 
Okay? And also, you must be humble enough to learn because if, let's say, if you were to present a lesson that is inaccurate, you must allow us to correct. All right? So this is just some of the requirement. And then people must, let's say, you cannot have, you see, most of the people who come and leave our church, they came from other uh, churches. Some of them, before they came into our church, and, and other pastors already warned us that they were troublemakers in, in that church. But why did we take them in? Because this church creates platform for people, and hopefully that when they come, they will confess, they will repent, that through the messages and through the Bible studies, that they will learn something and that bring them to the, the point of repentance so that they can be used by the kingdom, so that we provide them uh, the platform. But if they fail and if they continue with their game that they had in other, uh, in the church that they, they came from, then there's nothing much we can do. We have done everything possible. You see the point here? But I assure you, when people are safe in our church, they remain faithful. So people get saved through these three main areas. We will have Alpha course later on. Brother Alan will talk a little bit about this Alpha course. Yeah. All right. Salvation comes through the Alpha course. Salvation comes through Delta Cells. Very important. Delta Cells is the place whereby we invite our people. Because you know what? Alpha course later on will be uh, in the data cell, will be presented in the data cells. Normally, like for the first few weeks, you know, we come together, you know, in the church location in Wisma TA, all right, we come together and then we, we watch the video, then we break up in the groups, then we begin to do the Alpha Cross, yeah? But after the uh, four weeks, you know, then they go back to the cells. They go back to the cells. And of course, through church uh, services, on site and online on Sunday, they get saved. And then once they get saved, in the center you'll find will be Kingdom People's Book. Means that everybody got to go through. Now, people who have been Christian long time, someone say, hey, Pastor, I've been Christian for 40 years. You still have to go through Kingdom People's Book. Not because that you need to learn new things because you know a lot of things, but that it's a refresher course, but it also helped you so that you can share and you can facilitate and you can teach the kingdom uh, book with uh, to other people, with other people. All right. So you become a discipler. You become a disciple maker. So for a teacher, right, for a teacher, let's say a teacher in a primary tree uh, 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 classroom, the teacher also have to read through all the textbook so that she can teach. Not that she needs to learn the primary three textbook, but because she's a teacher, she still has to read through so that she can teach. Same. You may be a fantastic preacher, you may be a fantastic pastor before, or you may be, uh, you know, uh, an elder in the church or whatever. Then you come to us and then you say, uh, I, I, I don't want to go to the Kingdom People's Book. Then we are saying, excuse me, uh, you, are you going to help to teach the Kingdom uh, people, but if you come with a different agenda, changes are that you won't stay here too long, right? Because church has church agenda. Really, if you cannot follow this agenda, there will be a thousand and one churches that you can go to, isn't it? Right? But in fact, line, this is what we we do. We follow through this whole thing. So after salvation, what happened? After salvation, we introduce the person to the delta cell. Means everybody got to go to the delta cell. Everybody. Everybody is sooner or later they have to be integrated into the cell. Without that family group, without the cell group, you they will not be able to grow healthily. And then they have to go to the kingdom people's book. Okay. Then all that they have learned will be expressed through discipleship and service, which means that they serve in the Delta cell, they serve in different ministries, uh, they, they serve on Sunday. And then they must also know power evangelism, just on the two hand punch. That is it. So the power and evangelism. So power 
be able to face the evil one and cast out evil spirit and kill the sick. So that is only through apprenticeship. Means that they watch how we do it, how we heal the sick and all that. So all of us here in faith line, we are talking about what? We are talking about commanding. We don't pray for the sick. We command. All right. And then evangelism. So these are the four areas that I pray all of you will memorize this and will run through this again and again until you become a guardian of this whole system. Every believer is encouraged to join this one-on-one -on -one discipleship program by going to the Four Kingdom People's Book. So I've said it again and again, all of you pastors and all of you leaders, please repeat it. Everybody goes through the Kingdom People's Book. If you haven't gone through, please go through it. You are not great enough that you don't have to go through it. Okay? And anyway, if you have to teach, like I say, you have to teach, you still have to go through it. I've been through this thing how many times, right? This book, I'm teaching it myself. So before I taught, you know what did I do? I read through it again. Why is it so difficult? Isn't it? So let's do it. All right. Now back to the acronym of our Delta Cells. And this is the last slide that D stands for discipling God's people. Very important. Disciple will make new disciples. Okay. Then E is for evangelizing the community. Wherever God places us, we are going to evangelize. We have to win new souls. We cannot have transfer growth only. Last year, we had a lot of transfer growth and that we don't have many people ready to be baptized. There are some, but not many, not as much as you know what I like to see. And then loving God and fellow men, that is dying to self and carrying our own cross daily. And that, you know, heal our ego, love God, let the agape love of God to touch fellow men. He said, we continue to love one another. And then teaching God's word, this is very important, right? The word of God, the living word of, of, of God, uh, first will be coming through the Bible, it speak to you. And then later on, God, because you are so full of God's word, easy for the Rema word of God to activate in your life. So you know what God is telling you what to do at the moment. And you won't go astray and you won't become a cultic leader and you won't go and do something stupid, right? Because you have to learn the word of God and be able to impart the word of God. And of course, the last one is adoring and worshiping God. That we are called to worship God. At the end of our life, you know, everything will fade away. When we go to heaven, we no longer need faith because we will see Jesus face to face. In heaven, we no longer pray because we talk to him face to face. But in heaven, one thing must happen. We adore. We worship. For eternity, we adore and we worship him. And that's what this is all about.